spiritual wickedness in high places I haven't posted a video in a while instead I've been content to add comments to other people's videos a little cowardly I know as video makers are the ones sticking their necks out and taking all the heat now however I believe the Lord is pushing me to share in a greater way I suppose I was scared before of unmasking my true self to the world a lack of faith in the grace of God and the blood of Jesus which covers all sin only Jesus was sinless in this world but even of him the Bible says he had the appearance of sin in his flesh without being an actual sinner and that is how it is with all, us also because we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency and the power is of God in other words God gets all the glory for any good that is done through us so when we display our sinful nature that we can't get the victory over and of which the Lord will not heal us of at least in this lifetime it works for the good once we are saved by accepting Jesus Christ as our full Savior we are born again of the Spirit Notice spirit here in John 3 is in small case. Here it isn't talking about being born of God's spirit, although we are, but just having our eyes and spirits open to the spirit world around us, having a spiritual awakening, no longer just carnal religionist. We are thrust into the spiritual warfare that we would all like to avoid. Probably so. why so many Christians remain spiritual babes all their lives. They don't want to have to face the battle, the foe, and the war. But if we are to accomplish anything in this life, we must climb up out of the trenches or the church pews and attack the enemy head on. This is what the lesson is about. There are spiritual entities that affect all of humanity, like the wind on the waves of the sea. There are spiritual entities that rule over cities, over districts of the world. There are demons that affect or even possess individuals. For most of my Christian life, I feared confronting them. But I have learned something lately. These powers are being used by God. So we don't have to fear them. They aren't even our greatest enemies. Who then is? other humans that insist they don't need Jesus Christ to make it to heaven the Antichrist strong in the flesh individuals who in their pride see themselves as self-sufficient and the leaders and dominators of those weaker than themselves these people are naturally spiritually strong they can affect the spirit world by their own human carnal spirits they and their vanity think they can build heaven or utopia on earth at least for themselves and their friends these people left unchecked raise more havoc on mankind than the devil think of Alexander the Great Genghis Khan Hitler etc these people are always fighting each other for domination of the world that's history. It's also what the Bible says about war. James 4.1 From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? And this, the lust they're talking about is to covet more, to want more, and not to be satisfied, to be like Satan. To quail the storms raised by them, God has sent these spiritual forces. Spiritual forces that are even stronger than they are, like the four horsemen and Satan, which gather together these humans that rebel against the knowledge of Christ to establish themselves as independent lords. Listen to this psalm. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And causes them, got these spiritual forces, causes them to be destroyed from the earth. It exposes them for what they really are. Think of Hitler's own devil-inspired rantings 
and misguided decisions that brought about his and Germany's destruction. Yes, Christians shouldn't have to worry about the devil or his demons at all. Jesus overcame them, defeated them, and have given us total power over them. As long as we don't give in to their lies, they have no power over us at all. It takes a little spiritual maturity, a firm knowledge of salvation according to God's word, to stand on the word of God against all the wiles of the devil. You may blow us about sometimes, like when he carried Jesus up into the pinnacle of the temple. But as, it, but as the old saying goes, we can't stop the birds from flying over our head, but we can, don't have to let them build a nest in our hair. So we can't stop from hearing the devil's lies and deceits, you know, and on the media. And both hearing and seeing their iniquity, Lot vexed his righteous soul. But when we hear the voice of the Lord again, we are washed clean by the spirit of the word and the spirit, the word, and the blood. Titus 3, 5 says, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing, renewing of the Holy Spirit. So our chief spiritual enemies isn't Satan's demons. It's the heathen, those who reject or never heard Jesus Christ, the word of God. Paul's preaching to the heathen and establishment of the churches is what ultimately brought down the strongest, biggest heathen empire the world had ever seen, Rome. One man who obeyed Jesus Christ started an avalanche of truth that no one could stop. Could the same be done today? Although it looks like the devil is sweeping the world with a flood of lies, see Revelations 12, 15 plus, sec plus 2 Corinthians 11, 3. The truth when preached is stronger because God is with those who preach the truth to verify the truth with signs and wonders. The only question has has the world already heard enough of the gospel and have they rejected it? If that is the case, then the wheels of judgment can't be stopped from grinding towards the fulfillment of prophecy, which is another destruction of societies, cultures, cities, and governments of mankind, a wiping clean of the old so a new planting of man can proceed planting on fresh ground, an erasing of the deceptions man has built up that resist the truth of God and his Christ, a harvest of the world that was, with the good being gathered into the farmer's barns and the evil burned up. How do we fight these movements of humanity towards Armageddon? It is not by the sword not like some Muslims say. It is still by preaching the truth, which is the only weapon that counts in eternity. But how about the need to protect yourself and your family in these last days? When hordes of demon-possessed gangs, which, beyond, which are beyond the police's power or control, kill thousands in the streets and in their homes, I think a sword or two to protect your home and family from these crazed individuals or their small or small groups of them is a necessity. And by sword, I mean a gun. Because you don't want to take a knife to a gunfight. Swords or guns are nothing more than equalizers. So a six foot, 250 pound male can easily be stopped by a 100 pound girl. But trying to take back the systems of man by fourth is not God's will. They must voluntarily allow him to have rule in their hearts and culture. And without Christ in their hearts and minds, they will never do what is right. They will always end up with devil-possessed leaders to dominate and organize them. When that happens, we know the time of destruction and, the, and renewal is close at hand. <clears throat> For us that fear, trust, and love God, 
who stay close to the Lord by His Spirit, His Word, and His blood, we are protected. Read Psalm 91. So don't trust, rely on the system, the works of man, and his kingdoms, which come to nothing. Trust in the Lord. Well, I was planning on talking about a more personal explanation of spiritual warfare. But above is what came out, so it must be more relevant for today. I thank you for listening. I invite your comments below. And I'll post the a text of this uh, little sermonette uh, below the video. Thank you very much.